College racing isn't for sale, yet. If you're wondering if college racing is up for sale because you're interested in buying a Cup Series team, well, they're not, yet. At least not for the next 24 months, according to team president Chris Rice, who went on SiriusXM NASCAR on Wednesday and said that the team isn't for sale. And it won't be for sale for at least another 24 months, which is an oddly specific time frame for a team that's out here trying to tell people that they aren't for sale, but they might be for sale in two years, but they're not for sale right now. Unless, of course, you bring along the right price, and I think anything's for sale. Just ask Chip Ganassi. But Colleague and Chris Rice also went on to say that they are looking for partners. They're not looking to sell, but they are looking for partners, which... Honestly, that makes sense. Everybody within the sport is probably looking for a financial equity partner to bring along at some point. I mean, we even saw Joe Gibbs Racing sell a portion of their company last year to the Harris Blitzer Sports Entertainment Group, which makes a ton of sense for them. But for Colleague, to openly come out and say we're not for sale, at least not for the next 24 months, is very weird. And it definitely leads some credence to the rumors that Colleg has at least been approached about being bought out or selling their charters off, rather. There's a couple of different avenues and things that could happen with Colleg, and we'll get into those in a second. You also have to keep in mind that Matt Colleg is a minority investor in a group that has a minority stake in the Cleveland Guardians, the Major League Baseball team. Within the next 24 to 30 months, they will have the option to purchase the majority stake in the Cleveland Guardians. So could Matt Collard be looking at that and being like, uh, might have to sell off this NASCAR venture to become a bigger owner within the Guardians? Could be. Or maybe Matt Collig is finally seeing the realization that competing in the Cup Series is really, really hard. Going up against the likes of Rick Hendrick, Roger Penske, Joe Gibbs, and others is a pretty monumental task to undertake. It's like trying to invade Russia in the wintertime. You generally don't do it. And if you do do it, it's because you're bringing a ton of money in as well. Matt Collig has a lot of money. Don't get me wrong. Lee Filter and the Collig companies are certainly made him a very, very wealthy man. But at the end of the day, the amount of money that it takes to be competitive in the NASCAR Cup Series versus being competitive in the NASCAR Xfinity Series is vastly different. And I think Colleg Racing as a whole has experienced that. Sure, they have two NASCAR Cup Series victories with A.J. Allmendinger, both of those coming on road courses. Awesome moments for the team, awesome moments for the sport in general. His win at Indianapolis was great. His win last year at the Roval was even better. The emotion that that team had was really welcoming. Honestly, it was a breath of fresh air to see a team and a driver love winning that much. So that's really cool to see. The team also has 23 Xfinity Series victories, and winning the Xfinity Series is a lot easier than winning in the Cup Series. I shouldn't say it's easy, but it's a lot more accomplishable than it is to do in the Cup Series. Your level of competitiveness is not the same there. And they partnered with Richard Childress Racing in the Xfinity Series, who has had a very stout Xfinity program for years now, decades even. And then on the Cup side, they're still kind of aligned with RCR there. They're at least up at the Welcome Campus, but it's very hard. It's hard to be competitive in the Cup Series, and we've seen colleagues struggle with that. And then I think, of course, everybody looks at who their driver lineup is for the 2024 NASCAR Cup Series season. They moved up Daniel Hemrick from the Xfinity Series. He brings along uh, his sponsor, Circle, a sponsorship that he's helped nurture and bring into the team. And they also are moving up, well, we actually don't know what's happening with the 16 car all the way yet. But when you look at it, they're looking for drivers that bring funding. No longer is Matt Collig willing to just slap the Collig companies on the side of these cars and, you know, foot that bill out of his own pocket. And I think that's where people are now wondering what the money situation is over at Collig. And granted, running a car out of your own pocket, running an entire program out of your own pocket is admirable, but it doesn't make good financial sense. And at his heart, Matt Collig is a businessman. He's an entrepreneur. And if you look at the ROI on something and you're like, I'm not getting back what I'm putting in here, you're less likely to go ahead and do that, regardless of how much you like winning. The whole trophy hunting thing is a little bit off kilter at this point. So what are the options for college racing going forward? Well, of course, there's the opportunity to bring on a partner, like Chris Rice said, and I think that might ultimately be what they end up doing, and not so much in like a private investment firm investing into the team, which I'm still waiting to see when that happens. Eventually, NASCAR is going to approach a point where private investment firms want to get involved with team ownership. 
We've kind of seen it with the Fenway Sports Group on the RFK side. We see it with the Harris Entertainment Group over at Gibbs. I'm waiting for more of those people to get involved. And I think that time is coming once this new media rights deal and revenue structure is figured out and finalized amongst NASCAR and the teams. And it'll be interesting to see how all of that goes. So they could do that avenue. What I ultimately think ends up happening with Trackhouse, well, that was a Freudian slip right there, with Colleg is that they end up merging with Trackhouse and becoming one four-car team. That puts four charters underneath one roof, and then it would give Trackhouse the ability to have a very stout in-house Xfinity program without having to lend their drivers out to Colleg. And then for Colleg, they get to keep having a really stout Xfinity program, something that they've always prided themselves on, basically. So it could kind of be set up like Hendrick Motorsports, and then you have JRM, where Dale Jr. and his company over here operate the Xfinity program for what is essentially the ladder to get to HMS, in a sense. I think that's what you could see happening here, where Trackhouse is the Cup Series side of this team, but then you have Colleg with Trackhouse as the Xfinity program, and I think that just ultimately makes the most sense. It allows Matt Collig to back out a little bit, still have control of that extended team, still have his name on it, but then it gives Justin Marks those coveted two extra charters that he desperately needs considering he has four drivers under contract and only two open spots. We've already seen them loan out Zane Smith to Spire this year in a partnership, a collab, if you will, with Trackhouse, which is good for the sport. So ultimately, I think that's what more than likely ends up happening. But those prices on charters aren't going down. And Justin Marks is going to have to find some money somewhere unless this is some sort of just equity partnership, which we'll have to wait and see on that. They, of course, could bring in a private equity firm or something along those lines to you know buy in. When we see that happen from time to time, it just doesn't usually pan out. Obviously, the Fenway Sports Group has been with RFK for a while. And you know Harris Entertainment with Gibbs remains to be seen how long they're going to be here. But when we've seen... come families like the Gillette's buy-in or others, it doesn't necessarily work out the best. So we'll see what happens there. There is, of course, the opportunity for them to just sell outright to somebody else, which could be in play. It won't be Dale Jr., regardless of how many times people put comments out there that Dale Jr. is going to buy Collig or Dale Jr. is going to buy Stuart Haas. Dale Jr. wouldn't spend $12,000 on a pontoon boat for TJ Majors. You think he's going to go out there and drop $80 million to purchase two charters? Seems highly unlikely. So there is also the opportunity for them to just straight up sell. And that's the one where I'm like, you mentioned 24 months. That's, again, oddly specific to say 24 months and not just like two years or like sometime in the future. Who knows what's going to happen? But to say Chris Rice saying we're not for sale for at least uh, the next 24 months. Well, that means that 24 months has been talked about between Chris Rice, Matt Collig, whoever, that just seems like such an oddly specific time frame for them to not have talked about that in the past. And maybe it's like, we'll see where we're at in 24 months. If we're not there, then we're out. Like, we'll go ahead and sell. That also gives them plenty of time to have the NASCAR, the new NASCAR revenue model take into effect where you'll have that 2025 season under your belt. So you can be like, this is how much money we made. This is what the revenue is. This is everything that goes into it. Would you like to purchase it for X amount of dollars? I ultimately think that's what ends up happening. There's two scenarios here. They either merge with Collig, uh, Collig merges with Trackhouse, in my opinion, or they end up selling outright. But I don't think that the future is long for Collig in the Cup Series. I think they are always going to be a stalwart in the Xfinity Series, which is great. And it's kind of, kind of crazy to think about this because literally 18 months ago, they were vying for Kyle Busch to sign with their Cup Series program. And now they only have one full-time driver and they're going to have a rotating seat of pay drivers essentially when it comes down to it for that 16 car and it's like man they Chris Rice said that they weren't in a position to sign Kyle Busch even if they did convince him that it wasn't going to be a great situation for for either of them but it is crazy that they went from trying to sign one of the most coveted free agents in NASCAR in quite some time to now you know talking about oh we're not for sale for at least the next 24 months just seems very odd so let me know what you think happens with Cog. Do they sell or do they merge with another team? And who do you think that's going to be? You can say Dale Jr. I know the comments are going to say sell to Dale Jr. I get it. Like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at Braycard, Instagram and Twitter at Braycard Blog.